Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the stream. It's been a while. Uh, don't think I've had a stream since last Tuesday's show. Uh, didn't come to you yesterday. I was a little busy. So today we're going to go full breakdown for the Waste Management Phoenix Open. We're going to talk about uh, the key stats. We're going to talk about the course. We're going to talk about the players. Uh, kind of give you everything that you need uh, to get ready for Thursday's tournament. Uh, one of the best tournaments of the year, in my opinion. And uh, obviously gives us a little bit of a sweat early in our Super Bowl Sunday uh, before, of course, we get to the big game. Uh, before I get into the breakdown, so I remind you guys that if you have a free Twitch Prime, if you have an Amazon Prime account, I should say, you get a free Twitch Prime sub. Uh, I have links below in the panels for you guys to link that up. Uh, gives you the opportunity to get that free Twitch Prime sub through your Amazon Prime account. Uh, and of course, it's something you want to take advantage of, even if you don't want to use the sub here. Uh, definitely use it on one of the fantasy guys, uh, Manny, Holka, Hodge, Al. Uh, lots of really good dudes out there doing great work. So uh, be sure to support the fantasy community on Twitch. Uh, if you are a subscriber here, we do have our Discord going. We have a few guys in the Discord actually have been having a pretty decent amount of fun talking about like PGA strategy, talking about NFL strategy, uh, how to you know cut down your player pools, MME stuff. Uh, all kinds of good stuff happening in the Discord. So uh, if you want to subscribe and get into that, uh, you can do that. Uh, and, of course, you will get access to the PGA sheet that I'll be using here on the show uh, if you subscribe to the stream. Uh, and if you're on YouTube, uh, of course, keep hitting us up with those subs. Uh, the YouTube numbers have been good. Uh, you don't get access to the sheet. You don't get access to the Discord, but you do help support the program. So uh, hit that subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff over on YouTube. Uh, let's talk waste management because, uh, again, like I alluded to before, really fun tournament. Uh, played at TPC Scottsdale. Uh, and it's it's a little bit more scoring than what we had last week. I mean, last week I thought we had a, a pretty high scoring event for what we typically see. Um, but this week, you know, at Phoenix, we really do anticipate there being a good amount of scoring. The winning average the last five years, uh, 16 under. This is a par 71, coming in at about 72, uh, 7266 total yards. You can see that we have uh, the additional par four this week. We lose a par five. I believe the average length, um, you know, under 200 yards every par three. About 440 yards for every par four, 556 yards for every par five. So uh, length probably not quite as key as last week. Um, but, you know, I always love a good bomber, so I don't want to just necessarily say don't play the bombers. Um, but in general, I would say that a couple other stats are going to stand out apart from driving distance. Driving distance is one of our key stats this week. Uh, but there are a couple of stats that matter more. So we just talk about... Uh, guys who are going to be in good shape to make cuts here. Uh, you're going to see a lot of the same stats pop up in the regression trees. That's always something that I really like to see. You know, it helps us to, to understand that, you know, guys who are good cut makers or just uh, quality golfers in general, uh, we're looking straight up at total strokes gained. If we're, you know, top 45 in total strokes gained and top 53 in uh, double bogey avoidance, 91% of those guys have made the cut. Uh, we're 91% likely to make the cut. And it's on a big sample, 74 golfers. So uh, this is a really profitable split, I think, for us if we're looking for guys who uh, are going to be cut makers. Um, but, of course, this this total split is the biggest one. So if you you know don't hit the double avoidance uh, barrier, well, that's fine. You still have a 70% chance to make the cut. Not quite as good as the 91%. Um, but good nonetheless. Uh, and if you should not make it to the right side of the tree in the cut makers, if you are top 106 in these uh, basically medium par fours uh, and top 103 in driving distance, so not you know not super long off the tee, but above a minimum threshold, uh, still 76% to make the cut. So we really want to focus on golfers that are in these three nodes, uh, guys who miss a lot of these marks. Uh, again. You know, you can see as low as 30% to make the cut uh, and 52% still below the overall field average based on guys in the study of 63%. So uh, we're not getting a huge edge here on a couple of the decision, deci decision nodes. Sorry, 
Uh, but we do want to get as many guys as we can probably in, in that 91% threshold. Uh, I changed up a little bit how we did this uh, from previous weeks. Instead of using percentile scoring, uh, I just looked at uh, guys who were top 25 in the event in DK scoring. Uh, and you can see that the two key thresholds are the same in terms of the statistics. So we still want to look at total strokes gained. Here we're a little tighter. We want to be top 39 in that statistic. Uh, and then we have a little bit of a looser hold here on double avoidance. Uh, you know, better than 69th in that category will get you to be 60% to be inside the top 25 in DraftKings scoring. That's DraftKings scoring, not a uh, finishing position. So very important delineation to make there. Um, but this is a huge number for us to have in uh, the stroke in the uh, top 25 department. This is really good, uh, very predictive. And again, 77 golfer sample, uh, that's really strong. So that's something that we're going to want to focus on this week. I think we have uh, actually a really good read on these thresholds this week because we have such big samples at the bottom. Uh, and we, uh, of course, have like a you know very wide difference here at each split. So uh, I really like that. Uh, still opportunities to have uh, some slight edge on the field if we don't hit the strokes gain department. I mean, it could be 32%, but not a lot of equity really gained there. Uh, we really want to focus, again, on, in tournaments on these guys who are uh, good at strokes gain and good that will avoid it. So uh, there's going to be a ton of golfers, obviously, that are both cut makers and have uh, you know really, in, really increased odds at being in the top 25 in drafting scoring. So... Uh, those two are very highly, highly correlated this week. Uh, and as a result, you know, focusing on those cup makers is definitely going to put us in position right away uh, to have a big day in terms of drafting scoring. Uh, now, when we look at top 10 golfers, again, uh, the only stat that shows in all three trees is double avoidance. Uh, a little bit of a lower threshold here, but that's because I want to look at year end minus one DK scoring if you were top 49. You know, if we were better than 50th, basically, in DK scoring from the previous year. And top 72. Oh, sorry. It's finals week, you know, a little tired. Uh, and t inside the top 72 of double points, 35% to be inside the top 10 in drafting school. So, uh, again, we have some really, really profitable trends here, I think, uh, especially since we have such big uh, samples. Uh, and guys who don't hit the DraftKings points threshold overall, just 4.3% to be inside the top 10. So not a great bet there. I mean, obviously, if you can find a couple golfers who uh, maybe don't hit the threshold but are going to be like sub 5%, you, know, you can still roll them. Uh, but I'm definitely going to be focusing in, in tournaments on guys that hit this final node. Uh, and there should be a decent amount of overlap just because of uh, double avoidance being a part of all three uh, and uh, DraftKings scoring having a pretty tight correlation with like something like total strokes gained. So I feel uh, pretty good about this. I think that the trees this week are really good, uh, much better than I thought that they were last week. Uh, and now I think we're ready to get into uh, this week's stat model. Uh, and I made uh, some pretty major changes, actually, to how I approach this. Uh, removed the uh, Vegas odds portion of the model. I mean, uh, you know, the uh, DraftKings scoring basically aligns uh, really, really tightly with uh, win odds and as a result we're not really gaining a ton of equity in that category anyway uh, it's really just giving like kind of an artificial bump to the guys in like the 7 8k range um, you know and, and just artificially hurting the guys that are priced up top so I took that away uh, and I oh, sorry uh, just did like a, a lot more stringent of a process we got like a lot more granular on how we evaluate something like current form and uh, course history. Uh, course history, we're still looking at the last five events, uh, but for current form, we're looking at the last three months of golf. Uh, maybe that'll change, you know, once so. Uh, basically, this like, uh, you know, swing season period and gap is like off the schedule, but uh, for now, I, I think that that's increasing our uh, predictiveness, kind of looking at uh, basically 10 or 12 events at a time. I think that that's going to be really good for us. So uh, looked at that, used all these kinds of different methods here. Uh, and when I went back and like back tested the method on last week, uh, hopefully you guys saw on Twitter, uh, we would have completely crushed. I mean, we would have only had uh, one missed cut. 
We would have only had uh, one missed cut in like our top 10 rated golfers last week. So uh, in terms of the cash rating. So uh, definitely looked like it was good last week. I'm hoping that we have a similar and quality methodology uh, this week. Uh, and let's kind of just take a look at the golfers by tier. We'll, we'll work our way down the salary scale as we often do. Uh, and, you know, this is a pretty packed field. I mean, uh, John Rahm has been like the stone nuts uh, in terms of golf. He has the best form of anybody in the tournament. Uh, so that's going to be, I think, you know, someone that you're going to be able to go to in tournaments. You know, he's $500 more expensive uh, than JT. Uh, so we'll see kind of how people use Rom. I mean, if you can get him in cash, certainly you want to do so. But uh, Rom is a hashtag good play pretty much any week he's playing golf. Uh, not a ton of separation at the top. Uh, the guys who stand out the best in terms of like a, a cash or uh, really uh, when I look when I say cash rating and GPP rating, I'm saying like who are our best, you know, medium projection type golfers? Who are our guys who we just really like to make a putt? And who are our guys who have upside, maybe with uh, less cut equity, or potentially less cut equity? Uh, so, uh, you know, guys like Rom uh, Hideki has crushed here. Uh, you know, withdrew last year, who had like the wrist injury, um, but four consecutive top fives here before that. So I'm sure that he's going to be incredibly popular. Uh, definitely want to keep your eyes peeled on uh, Jonesy's uh, ownership projections. I know that he has just crushed. I mean, the R squared has been like you know 80 percent or higher every week. So uh, Jones is crushing it on the ownership. Uh, and I have a feeling that Hideki, when I talk to him tonight for bogey free, is going to be one of the projected highest owned golfers in the field. And, uh, you know, as a result, he's definitely going to be somebody you want to try to get in your DraftKings lineup for cash. Uh, we'll kind of see how to approach him in tournaments. He doesn't really seem to have, uh, in terms of the stat fit, the upper percentile probabilities, but he's out like hurting you you know like he's basically level with the field uh, and when we consider his course history obviously we think he would have uh, an even better um an even better uh look basically at a top end finish uh xander chauffele has uh some pretty high upside he's probably our, our best overall play it looks like in this middle area like 10k and up uh he's 80 and 84 respectively in both spots so uh xander's gonna be a good play for sure um, and if we get below 10K, I think this is actually where it gets a little interesting because, you know, Gary Woodland has been uh, a stud, right? I mean, he's made like 18 consecutive cuts. Uh, he has a ton of top 10s already this year. I mean, I, I don't really need to tell you how good Gary Woodland has been. Uh, so as a result, uh, he comes in as a good cash play, uh, but he doesn't actually hit the threshold that we want in terms of double avoidance. He's 101st in that category. So. Uh, that keeps him out of the top group uh, for that stat. Uh, makes things a little bit more interesting, I guess, if you're putting your cash team together. I mean, uh, Woodland is like a, a stone lock cut maker, it seems like. I mean, current form, 82. Uh, but the course history here is, is basically average. Uh, and the stat rating, of course, uh, basically average. So uh, Woodland, to me, is kind of interesting because it feels like... Oh. I don't know what's wrong with me. It feels like the numbers are kind of suggesting that like Simpson is a better play, uh, just in terms of overall upside. But obviously Webb, uh, not quite in as good a form. Does have a little better course history and obviously has uh, the top end stat projection. Uh, so if you just look at uh, kind of what Simpson has done in terms of cut making, uh, he's made the cut here seventy five percent of the time. Uh, missed the cut here last year. We've made all of his cuts so far this season, uh, albeit in just two events. So uh, Simpson is going to be kind of an interesting play for me. Uh, Finau has missed the cut here, I want to say, in like three straight seasons. So uh, he does profile as a good play. Uh, but look at the course history for uh, Finau, and this does come courtesy of uh, Smart Golf Bets on Twitter. You can see he's missed three straight cuts here, finished 22nd in 2015, but uh, he's actually really struggled here. Now, uh, the fact that he's playing outstanding golf, uh, you look at his current form. He has, uh, you know, three top fifteen, uh, three top sixteens already this year. Uh, that's going to make him, I think, a decent tournament pivot. I would imagine that he's going to be a little lower owned in that top range just because of the course history. I'm sure that people, uh, you know, I'm sure that people want to look at the course history and be like, oh well, I'm just going to fade Finau because he stinks here, and uh, a lot of these other guys are very good. So 
Uh, we'll see. Again, I'm going to keep my eye on Jonesy's uh, ownership projections. Uh, but I think that Finau is going to make for a pretty intriguing tournament play for those who are willing to take on uh, what would appear to be, based on his course history, some risk. But I think based on the stats, uh, looks like a good play. Uh, Ricky is kind of the opposite. Ricky is uh, not in quite as good form as Finau, but uh, plays really well here. Uh, but similar to Woodland, doesn't have like the, the top end uh, stat outcome. Um, now it should be noted that in the cash model, I'm looking exclusively at uh, your odds to make the cut. In the tournament model, I'm looking at you know all of it. I'm basically weighing the stats actually twice as heavy overall, uh, and I'm factoring in the cut percentage the same, uh, but then adding like a whole nother percentage basically just for uh, these upper end outcomes. So I uh, really like Ricky this week. I know that last week he had that hashtag ball narrative, uh, but he still played all right. Um, we'll kind of see how he does. Uh, this week at Waste Management, a place that he typically has crushed at. Uh, I'm pretty much never playing Phil, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just fade him. I mean, I think the bottom's going to come out of him eventually. Uh, but Kucher seems very, very safe. Uh, again, the course history and the current form are very good. Doesn't have like the high-end stat projection, uh, but again, uh, grades out as a good play. There's a ton of really good cash-rated plays in this field this week, so there's going to be a lot of different ways that you can go in terms of construction. Uh, the one guy that it looks like is probably a fade in this spot is Hadwin. Uh, really does not look like a good course fit at all. Uh, he is in good form, and he's played decently here. If you just look, he, uh, that's current form, course history. You know, he's made 75% of his cuts with an average finish of 43rd, so he's not like totally crushing it. Um, so like I feel comfortable, I think, fading Hadwin. I think he's the one guy in like the upper part of the salary scale that I'm going to get away from. Uh, I feel like he's always kind of popular, and at 9K, he's not like going to scare a ton of people away. Uh, I definitely like Bubba more. I think Bubba has more upside. Uh, but the guy in cash that you're playing this range, I mean, uh, professional cup maker Billy Horschel, Billy Ho, uh, playing really well. Obviously, he has the elite stat outcomes that we want, uh, but he's played pretty well here and is in really good form. You look at what he's done. So far this season, he's made uh, all of his cuts, and uh, you know that is always a good sign for us. Uh, let's take a look at at the ho dog. Um, finished eighth last week, was one of our preferred cash plays, uh, and has two other top 25. So uh, was a guy that we were getting in like the 7K range. Now he's up to 8,800. Makes it a little bit tougher, I guess, to jam in. Uh, we'll kind of see. I'm curious, like what the field's gonna do with him, but. Uh, definitely a big fan of Billy Ho. Uh, certainly will be a staple of my lineups uh, this week. Uh, Norin, again, gets a good rating. I'm not sure I'm going to go back to the well on Norin. Uh, just hasn't really played well here and hasn't played great here recently. Uh, he's basically getting like a, a pretty large bump from uh, his stat projection here. Um, but I think everything else kind of leaves me wanting more. Uh, if you subscribe to the sheet or if you're watching on the stream, you'll notice that I have some guys in yellow. So like in the past, I was taking out completely uh, guys in the field that I didn't have stats on for last season. I uh, pretty much was just saying, hey, you know, year end minus one, that does not exist for this golfer, so I'm just going to avoid uh, and not give a rating to him. Well, now I'm going to try to change that just so we have a little bit of information on these guys. I'm uh, going to just look at how they rate uh, in their last, over their last 50 rounds versus the field. Um, and of course, I'll take a look at that, uh, and prorate that basically to, uh, the tour field sizing. So I think eventually I'll have enough. I mean, I think, uh, Spanish National updates a little bit slow on that in season statistics, it seems like. Uh, cause some of these guys, like, don't show up when I do it that way. But I always look at last 50 rounds, uh, versus the field. I think that gives us a, a pretty decent idea, basically, of where these guys will be. Um, and you can see I'm not playing Camp Champ anyway, so not really a huge deal. Uh, Luke List could end up being a decent tournament play, probably not playing with cash. Uh, the two guys, or you know, the two guys that I think intrigue me the most in this range, uh, Keegan Bradley at 7,800 just seems massively underpriced. Uh, has made a ton of cuts, uh, all including all five of his cuts over the last three months here, uh, and he's played decently enough here. I mean, the 68. Uh, in the course history is not great. He's made 60% of his cuts at uh, Phoenix, 
Uh, but I just feel like this is a different Keegan Bradley. Uh, you can see that he's basically gone. You can see that Bradley, you know, missed the cut here two years ago. Uh, but he's just playing really good golf. I mean, again, the, the five straight made cuts, but I think he's made something like 14 straight cuts uh, on tour. So uh, a little bit of a narrative shifter for Keegan. And I think that he is uh, overall going to be somebody that we want to target. I uh, really like him. Uh, Zach Johnson, meanwhile, is kind of in a different situation. Like uh, his current form stinks. Uh, 52 current form rating, but he plays really well here. He has, uh, you know, great course history. Uh, just a matter if uh, Zach Johnson can kind of get off the schneid. Uh, did make his last cut two weeks ago, uh, but has missed two cuts already this season. Uh, makes him a little bit tough to trust in cash, but, you know, the, the results here have been really good. Uh, three of the last four years, he's finished top 14. Last year, 57th, not great. Uh, but he's been really productive here at Phoenix, uh, at Scott, uh, TPC Scottsdale. So I am uh, torn on him. I think he's like the one guy, if I'm making like an optimal lineup, that I'm going to think really, really hard on. Uh, but I think ZJ, just in terms of how he fits the course, looks really, really good. Uh, if you don't want to risk it with ZJ, I think Rio is just like a perfect pivot. Um, is a professional cup maker. Does have decent enough course history and does have decent enough numbers in the stat models. Uh, again, uh, Grio, three straight made cuts here at this event uh, and has not missed a cut this season. He's made like 12 cuts in a row, so uh, 12 or 14 cuts in a row. So Grio is, is a really safe bet. I mean, I think if you want to avoid the risk on ZJ and uh, save yourself a couple hundred bucks in the process, uh, he's probably the pick. Uh, and if you don't, if you want to take the risk, obviously you're, you're just going to play Zach Johnson. Uh, Brendan Steele uh, looks like a decent cash play, um, but again, the current form on him isn't phenomenal. Uh, hasn't played a ton of golf this year. That's really what it is. And I'm, I'm starting to penalize guys in the model this uh, this week, or really started last week, but starting to penalize guys in the model who don't, who I just haven't played a lot. Uh, you know, Steele obviously missed his last cut, which hurts him. Uh, missed last week uh, and hasn't played a ton this year, but he has played really well here. I mean, 3, 16, 17, 26, 6, 6, 5. Uh, has just really crushed here at uh, Scottsdale. So uh, certainly Steele could carry some ownership this week. I don't think it's a terrible play. Um, doesn't fit, doesn't hit the strokes gained, total strokes gained mark, uh, but does do enough to end up in that top 76, uh, you know, that 76% uh, range in terms of cut making. So uh, Steele. Uh, firmly, firmly in play. I uh, definitely think that he is uh, reasonable. Um, same thing with Kokrak. Sanjay Eam, uh, definitely a really, really good tournament play. Hasn't played here, so that's really what kills him. Uh, but has been really good this season. Five of six cuts made over the last three months. Uh, just hasn't played. Um, that's the one-on-one -on -one means in the course history average. So uh, hasn't played here, and you get a zero in the course history mark. Obviously, that's going to hurt your overall rating uh, from a cash perspective, but does get a bump in tournaments. Uh, because he does have the perfect, uh, basically, stat layout for the course, which is a nice, uh, you can say kind of the same thing for Ryan Moore. So those are guys I think will probably go a little bit under the radar. Uh, Jones's boy, Neiman, uh, not good. Going to be avoiding him for sure. Uh, and then we get into the, uh, you know, upper 6K range, and this is where I start to find some guys that I really like. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, Streelman. Has a, a nice stat profile for us, uh, as does Harris English. The English left down last week. Um, but Brian Gay and uh, Chris Kirk stand out a ton at this level. Um, they do have really good odds of making the cut. Gay in particular uh, has just those cut odds, but Kirk has kind of the full Monty. Uh, if you look at how they've performed, uh, they've both played very well here at TPC Scottsdale. The kind of big question mark is the current form. So let's take a look at how those guys have performed uh, this season, or you know, at least over the last three months. I'll check out Gay first. I mean, he's played good golf here, uh, top ten last year, but two other finishes, uh, you know, where he made the cut. Uh, and when you look at how he's performed this year, again, missed his most recent cut, uh, but 
otherwise has been solid. Hasn't played a ton of golf. Um, that's kind of what's you know hesitating, giving me a little bit of hesitation. I would like to have seen to have seen him made a cut. You know, for instance, last week. Uh, then I'd have a little bit of confidence, but uh, certainly think that Gay in cash is still feasible, just because of that price. Uh, and let's take a look at Kirk, uh, who also has played well here uh, over the last five seasons. Uh, five years ago, not great, uh, but again, 11th last season, two other finishes into the top 40. Uh, has made, missed three straight cuts, though. I mean, that's really what I think is going to keep him out of uh, true cash consideration for me. I mean, I know he has that 88 rating here. Uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, the other numbers, though. I mean, uh, again, he has the perfect stat fit. And he has a good course history. So that's going to bump him up a decent amount. Uh, it's actually one thing that I'm considering looking back at the model on and just maybe weighing that current form a little bit more than the course history, maybe like a 60-40 kind of a split. Uh, just because I do think having guys in current form is a little bit more important than guys with a good course history. Uh, but Chris Kirk is going to be someone I'm going to want to play in tournaments, I think, for sure. He does seem to carry that upside just based on his stat profile. Uh, and that is something that is important to me. So I think if I'm if I'm picking, I'd go Gay in cash, and Kirk in uh, in tournaments. Uh, Steve Stricker actually saw it today. Uh, Drewby put a bet on Stricker to win. Uh, so I know Drewby's on board on Stricker. Uh, not a terrible play. Uh, and that's kind of it. When you go down, we finish with Matthew Wolf, the Stone Zero uh, rating for us. So. Um, Lots of really good plays here. I mean, something that we hadn't seen in a lot of these weeks is that we weren't getting a lot of golfers in like the 80 or 90 range in terms of their rating. Uh, but if we resort here just by cash rating, you know, now you can see that we have a bunch of guys and we have seven dudes with an, with over a 90 rating. We hadn't really had a week like that all season. Uh, and there's a bunch of guys in the 80 range. So, uh, lots of good plays here. I think the fact that we have a little bit more information, uh, you know, basically a month into like the full part of the season, uh, that gives us opportunities to find some better plays. Uh, but also waste management has uh, some deep course history and there's some guys who are really good here. So uh, I think that's going to kind of drive a lot of the ownership, but uh, certainly something that we're going to want to pay attention to this week. So uh, lots of really good golfers, lots of really good plays. Uh, I am really excited to kind of see what happens. Uh, and again, if you get into the Discord, I'm sure that we're going to be talking a ton about the PGA slate. Uh, shout out Corey, obviously. He's always uh, asking a ton of good questions in the chat. Um, but we have you know a couple other guys that are in there as well, really facilitating some good conversations. So uh, subscribe uh, if you're on Twitch and get access to the Discord. Come hang with us. Hope to see you in there. Uh, but I also hope to see you at the top of the leaderboard this week in your PGA contests. Uh, certainly, I hope to be there as well. So uh, good stuff here. Hope you guys like the video. And uh, stay tuned. I plan on doing something towards the end of the week on the Super Bowl slate for showdown. Probably, uh, I would imagine, probably on Saturday during the day, we'll get uh, your sh all the showdown takes in that we can for the Super Bowl. So uh, we'll talk to you guys then. Uh, we'll see if we can get some other stuff maybe going throughout the week. Uh, without football, obviously the streams are going to be a little lighter than usual, uh, but hopefully we can get some other content going before baseball starts. Really excited for baseball in a couple months. So uh, stick here, uh, at least the follow button, so you guys can see exactly when I go live and you don't miss a stream. And uh, good luck this week. Hope you guys all crushing the links. Hope to see you in the Discord. Peace.